how utterly pointless was that opening. At first I thought that the whole pan was going to reveal Mila. You know, we were clearly in Tokyo, maybe the virus hadn't quite hit there yet, and she was there to meet up with Wesker. But then after spending, I don't know, two minutes panning the camera up this damn girl, she just jumps on the nearest guy, and it's apparently the night the lights went out in Japan. I know that we don't get a real time frame to go along with how fast we see the lights go out, so I guess we're just supposed to take it as, well, however long it actually did take for the infection to spread that far, that's how much time we're seeing passing here. My question is, why the fuck is she just standing there? What is she waiting for? She's a fucking zombie. How did a zombie get to be right there in the middle of the busy streets with absolutely nothing happening? I mean, that zombie must be like a kid in a candy store. And a kid in a candy store doesn't just stand there staring aimlessly and then suddenly pounce on this one caramel or whatever. Having Schofield literally start out in a jail cell trying to get out, even trying to use mind games, trying to manipulate, that was just face-palmingly on the nose. I mean, that was just too much. Honestly, who didn't know that the real Alice was aboard the chopper? Mrs. Jovovich, welcome back. I missed you. Seriously, every movement of his, the way he talked, that was 100% Agent Smith. And I guess the t Rivers somehow de-aged him by 12 years. He's also got the worst case of red eye I've ever seen. The opening action sequence was really badass. It's really too bad that it was completely pointless because Wesker survives and he was the whole point of going there. And he survives until the very end and if you believe that that's him in the parachute then he might have survived the entire movie making the entire movie pointless. Did anybody care when Kim Jong died? Were they serious with that name? At first, I thought it was a joke. I mean, I can't be the only one who thought of, you know, the ruler of North Korea. Was that producer maybe based on someone real? Like, Paul W. S. Anderson had a bad experience with a producer at some point, and this was his revenge? Maybe even such a close approximation of that real person as a kind of, you know who you are? Something that was a little awkward in the opening action sequence was that there was at least like a second or so where Mila looked like she was floating. And I know obviously this is because she was on wires, but it's not one of her powers and it takes us out of the fiction of the film. I also feel like that sword got a lot shorter when she tossed it into the guy's head. Why couldn't it be sticking out the back? Did the MPAA balk? The use of the telekinetic power in the beginning was fucking awesome. I really like how he used the clones. First we see the one, and then that one gets shot. Then we see three, and they start killing. And notice how every time there are more of them, we see less action. And the most we ever see at one point fighting is, I think, six when they're shooting at the chopper. Because the more elements you have in an action scene, the more you have to make sure that there's room for all of it, that you follow up on all of them. Notice how in good action films there tend to be just one or a couple of really prominent participants in an action scene. There being more that survive for a long time doesn't make the scene better. Couldn't Mila have taken off more clothes before spotting the peeping Tom? I mean, this would have been such a good place for her to get naked in the film. I do like that jumping through the glass, Trinity Matrix Reloaded style, wasn't just an act of desperation. They had the rope, and they survived that bit. She did kind of repel a lot in this. I mean, there was that bit with the glass, and then on top of the prison, which I gotta admit was really fun. Seeing all the zombies like lemmings go out over the edge, everybody in the theater laughed. And then she lands safely and then she starts shooting them. Why did she take so very long to run away from them? 
the pan to the mass of zombies so we could see that, oh, she was standing there and shooting, but then we see, ah, there's way too many. It was fine enough, but it was pretty obvious. Before the pan began, I knew that that was going to happen. I also liked pretty much everything that had to do with the plane that was either exciting or tense in some way. Her passing over them and nearly hitting them, the whole landing bit. I have mixed feelings about the guy jumping onto the back rotor or what it's called. It's one of those ideas of Anderson's that I don't think was as clever as I think he thought it was. That was a lot of thinking. I also like when the producer asshole was in the plane and he nearly crashed and he just went through a bunch of zombies and you just see all the blood splurting up. That was pretty cool. When you see that shot of Mila coming at the camera, having just jumped over, and it's sort of a close shot, you see at least the upper half of her body, and you know, with the 3D glasses, it's like she's coming straight at you. Was I the only one sitting there thinking, come to me, Mila? The two swords and the throwing stars, that was really cool. This was a great monster, even if it was completely unexplained, for really the first time in one of these movies, that it was that extensively not at all explained. It was a really great monster, and they got very good use out of him. I mean, in the first, it was basically your average tense action thriller sequence with something dangerous is coming at the leads, and they fight it with whatever means at their disposal. You know, it wasn't a big fight scene or something. In Apocalypse, it was a fucking fight scene with martial arts. Seriously, who thought that martial arts against Nemesis, against a monster, was a good idea? Anderson, I bet. Extinction, I liked the monster, but then they had the telekinesis fight it just wasn't as good. In this one, I really think they did well at it. I mean, the massive meat pounder thing, I don't know what it's called in English, with the axe on the other side, and he's just constantly nearly hitting them. You know, they're not hugely superior to him. I don't think that Alice should really have had such an easy time recovering from being hit like that, but okay. And the fight against Wesker was pretty cool, too. I like that him dodging bullets wasn't right out of the Matrix, effect-wise. I know that using coins in a gun like that probably doesn't make sense in real life, but it was really cool, and it was a nice reveal. With the first time she uses them, you just see the coins come out, and then it's like, of course, that's why she collects them. I do think that they showed us that too many times. Also, the dogs at the end, you know, right out of Silent Hill 3, by the way, with the heads splitting like that. You know, we didn't need to see both heads split like that, even if they did try to make a cool angle on the second one. Finally, Alice actually saves people. In all four films, she has a group of survivors around her. They're all trapped in this area and she's trying to lead them out, trying to save their lives. It didn't go so well in the first three. The third one kind of ends with, we don't know if they're going to be safe where they go. At least we find out that they weren't safe where they went. But here she actually saves people, you know, 2,000 apparently. Am I the only one who feels like they should maybe find out what experiments were carried out on these people before releasing them all? The robotic spider, at first it seemed like it caused mind control and Claire attacked because she was under the influence of that. Kids, don't do robotic spider. Say no. But then the one on Kmart doesn't seem to do anything. She's not violent, at least not towards them. It also seemed to cause amnesia, but then Kmart didn't have any problem figuring out who she should attack. 